What is up, you guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Mangaku Special, where we go through and read all of the Jump Tezuka uh, 100th Anniversary Competition entries. This week, we have JJ. Welcome, JJ. How you doing? Doing good. Thanks for having me. Lots yep, of disrespect no going on in these other squares. Yeah, we were going to get rid of Josh for you, about. but he started crying, so I had to keep Josh, and it was really awkward. Uh, so for uh. those of you that don't know, Jump Tezuka is a very special contest this year because it's open worldwide, so any aspiring mangaka can contribute their manga and get it read by the greats of the greats, such as the author of Dragon Ball Z, One Piece, Blue Exorcist, My Hero, Slam Dunk, and some of the Tezuka production, production guys, but who cares about those guys? So, as always, we're going to go ahead and we've each picked a manga. We've all read them ahead of time. So, we'll go through. We'll give you a synopsis of what we thought, what happened. And then we'll ultimately pick a winner of the four that we have this week. And then uh, we'll, we'll decide. And ultimately, the goal is to pick the ultimate, ultimate winner and see if we can pick the correct one. So, this week, we're going to be doing My Choice, which is Vampire by Haku. Josh picked Soundless Patchwork Tremble by Giant Turtle. Jose, Lobster Vampire, and Hummus Cat by Mark Dowell. And then, JJ, you picked Al by Lord Gaius? Question mark? Yeah. I'm assuming. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and start with Vampire, which is going to be mine. I want to go first, and then we'll just work through the order that I listed. So starting off with Vampire by Haku. Pretty straightforward one. I liked it. But we basically open up to a blood mage, just absolutely mm -hmm. wrecking shop on these two dudes. Think of kind of like... Katara from Avatar, you know, when she yeah. gets really OP. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. basically that if they could do it all of the time. So, <laughs> you know, best ability yeah. in Avatar, 100% of the time. That's this one. So we see this guy who he doesn't come in the rest of the manga. But we see him basically, one guy passes out. And then he makes another guy float up in the air and just basically make him explode. Like a fucking blood balloon. Like yeah. Krillin. Yeah, okay, exactly like Krillin. If yep. he grew really large and then fucking exploded. They come and kind of talk about how cruel torture methods and human experiments is what brought blood mages into infamy, which is really fucked up. And it was so bad they earned a place under the seven deadly sins, which you find is like an actual group of people. Um, and then after a long purge from the Holy Knights, which is another group of people, almost all of the seven deadly sins got annihilated. But spooky time. Some say that the seven leaders of the seven deadly sins found a way through death to bind their souls to the world and are still present to this day. Dun dun dun. I wonder if like necromancy, because they kind of they didn't tell you what the seven deadly sins were, but they kind of gave you a picture of each one doing yeah. something. Yeah, yeah. I think I wonder if they do like some soul binding is like part of it. So that's, dark it looked pretty cool. Yeah, they looked cool, but all we know is that blood mages were part of it, and that's about it. Yeah. So then we kind of go to whatever time where we meet our main character's name is Dion, who is 22 and a blood mage. And he's basically just studying, trying to learn a new spell. And that's when he senses his like the atmosphere change and a girl climbs through his window, kind of like a fucking Nick at Night show. And this girl is Mana, who is 20 and seems like his girlfriend. Don't know the relationship I, there. They're close. Girlfriend. They yeah. like live together, right? Vibe I was getting. Yeah. That, that, we'll I just go with his girlfriend. I vibe more than yeah, girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. Or like they live together. Girlfriend. Maybe they get married young. They don't live very long. Blood Mage is just going at it. Yeah, So true. you find out she's kind of got a thing for animals. Meanwhile, all the animals hate Dion. So that's kind of like a weird thing they mention. I don't know if that's going to come into play later. But they demonstrate that by having a squirrel 360 no scope a nut into his mouth. So that's kind of how we get that one. I need the image for that because I feel like <laughs> everyone's going to paint a very, very different image. So Dion really wanted to try this new spell. Mono wants to go hang out. And eventually, you know, Dion's like, all right, fine. You want to go hang out in our usual place. And so they go to leave. They put up a barrier on their house because they're just not, they don't feel safe in a village of other blood mages. Like there's not a community. So they go to leave, and they see some bandaged-up guy who never really gets a name. And he tells them, like, hey, Elder wants to talk to you. It's an emergency. And so they're like, fucking fine. Okay, I guess we'll go. Important to note, as the bandaged guy is leaving, they make a quick note that he's kind of, like, talking to himself, we think. Yeah. And he's saying, you were taking too long, C, which I'm sure is something later. I don't. It's yeah. not mentioned ever again in the manga, but that is a very important part that they mention. So they meet up with the elder where he explains basically one of his homunculi had escaped and he wants them to go kill it because it's going to draw too much attention towards their village if like the holy knights come and have to do it. And so this is where we learn that the elder had like fucked up mana before or like done something yeah. to mana. And she basically has PTSD the moment he brings that up. And so that pisses off Dion and you find out that Dion basically can't do shit with the elder because he made a bargain 
or with the chief is what he's called. And so now he's basically like his workhorse until he can find a cure for question mark. We don't know what he's finding a cure for as well. And then meanwhile, double, double, the chief is also secretly trying to find a way to take Dion's power before he could find the cure. So it's like a whole multi-layer fucking ordeal going on here. So eventually Dion and Mana do a cool like blood teleportation thing, which was pretty dope. And they go out in the forest, look for the homunculi. And there they meet a guy who was bitten by a poisonous snake, and he needs help. The classic scenario, suck the blood out of, you know. Uh, So Dion offers to help because, like, no problem. I could just bend the blood out and just totally get you sorted. But the guy is so scared that he's a blood mage that he's like, nah, I'm just going to go run and die instead. Even though they tell him, like, he's only got a few minutes left to live. So snake guy goes to leave, and that's when we hear screaming, and surprise, it's the fucking homunculi. Basically sticks his hands through his chest and tears him in two. He didn't die from the snake, though. Did That is correct. He didn't that's die true. from the yeah, snake. he didn't die from the snake. So yeah. he could have really died either way. We, we don't yeah. know. And basically it ends on, oh, that must be our target, and end manga. So it yeah. felt very much, instead of going for like a one-shot kind of like, here's a quick little taste... It's very much set up to have more chapters. Like we're gonna yeah. just keep going. I definitely see that. Um, because we don't <laughs> really know. Like, there's a lot of question marks in here. Yeah, but I think it, oh, dude. I thought it was really good. I I would say this is one of my like favorites and like the top. Yeah, the art was really good. Uh, oh, you can totally tell. Yeah, the art was great. Was the art very reminiscent of uh, Naruto? Definitely. Yeah. Like okay, the definitely. first first dude on the first page is like mm-hmm. so he gets it for sure yeah, <laughs> that's how i was like i was like whoa yeah, yeah. oh um, and then, and then look, the uh, elder uh talon yeah. i believe his name is uh just the the village setup kind of thing gave me real naruto vibes yeah overall uh but he definitely reminded me of kind of a mix between the third hokage third yeah uh Donzo. and yeah donza the yeah. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Toby and Donzo. Yeah. He threw me for a loop because I thought he was a good guy at first, and then it's yeah. like, oh, no, he's and just a like, piece oh, of he's shit. A, he's a dick. Yeah, but I kind of – I liked it. Like, I agree with you. I feel like this wasn't one of those one-shots where it's like, here's a little teaser. Like, I could have kept reading this. Like, there was way more, but yeah. at no I point like I needed they... a, little, a tiny bit more. Yeah, but they didn't, they didn't over-explain anything. You kind of, like it, – it's like enough of a medium where you could kind of fill in the what you needed with your own mental stuff. But like Sam said, like that – the teleportation, the blood teleportation, sick as fuck. Pretty gnarly. The they just mixed that out of nowhere, yeah. by the way. They're just like, hey, uh-huh. you can teleport 11 meters in the forest that way. And that, yeah. that was one of the few times where I kind of like, oh, oh, we can just teleport. Okay, cool. <laughs> they, yeah. mentioned, they mentioned like a node or something. Like this is the closest node to our mark that we yeah, could yeah. get. Oh, so it's not like that. a transport system or not. Transport. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking maybe there was going to be a dead body, but it just kind of looks like the blood comes out of a rock. So yeah. I don't I yeah. don't really understand. But yeah, I'm I'm excited. I'm kind of it was kind of cool that they didn't fight anybody. Like they just they got a lot of the world building done, but it was like I didn't feel like it was world building. They were just nah, talking. that's not cool. They should have fought that guy. What are you talking about? Uh, yeah, I would have liked a little bit to of action. Some action. Cool. Yeah. I was okay with it, but yeah. It just seems like right when it was getting good, they were like, and scene. And done. Was, yeah. Like, yeah. okay. Which I can kind of get where they're coming from because like, oh, I want to see more, so maybe I'll yeah. vote for this one. I definitely agree. But um, this is, like, super polished. Yeah. So I just feel like, And this yeah, is one like, of – I feel like this has been in the submissions for a while. And mm-hmm. it's – I thought it was I thought it was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I do think that the entire Seven Deadly Sins and Holy Nights and just basically the first part could have not been there. Yeah. Because it didn't seem I, to I, really I, matter all that much. Yeah, you're like, right. Switch that out. From, get the combat oh. on the end. We, we could have just went straight from, like, the, oh, the blood mages are infamous to, oh, look, here's Dion, who wants to not be bad because he's a good guy. I... Uh, born a blood mage, but wants to do good. Uh, something like that. I yeah. don't know. I kind of liked it. it. It, like, sets up this, like, really ominous tone, like, the world's much bigger than just blood mages kind of thing like that. But I, I definitely see where you guys are coming from. I Yeah, I get you. And, uh, you know, it's just another, the whole Seven Deadly Sins and the Holy Knights is a little tropey. Yeah. And I feel like if it didn't try and use that as, like, a crutch to be like, oh, look, Seven Deadly Sins, people think they're cool, so we'll have them in our story. (laughs) It it could have stood on its own without having to rely on those tropes, I feel Mm -hmm. like. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I mean, it was still good. 
Like yeah. we, I think we all are in agreement. It was good, but oh, I, I wish it would have gone into the combat at the end for sure. And I think yep. it was fifty pages already, so it was a lot. Forty two. Forty two. Okay, yeah. You so maybe idiot. throw ten more pages in there. Do the combat. Yeah. Exactly. Because a lot of the then, entries are fifty pages. And you would find out whether or not Sam liked your shit because he would be like, I couldn't understand the combat. So went from like, <laughs> yeah. And I think this is a submission that predetermined Sam was going to be one of the judges and was like, we won't do combat. It's just, it is. As soon but as I need to see combat, the combat. It's shown in jump. I have to see the combat. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that was vampire. Let's move on to the next one. Um, on Josh, you're going to be next. And you did soundless patchwork tremble by giant yeah. turtle. So it's a it's a bit of an edgy boy. Uh, it's less of a, like a like action packed. It's more of like a introspective kind of slice, slice of, life. of life. I, I I really like to use that term, and I think Sam is always like he says that a lot, but I don't think he knows what that means. Um, but basically, it's about this girl Eco, um, and it's kind of like hinted at. Like everything's really hinted at in this. There's nothing really set out uh, outside of like one or two things. But she's kind of an undiagnosed mental health. Um, issue she's got some form of anxiety she kind of comments that she's got like difficulty keeping her mind all together kind of like she's unstable a little bit and it's like a coming of age story for her so uh you kind of start off with meeting uh her really supportive friend izumi um she kind of helps her get through all of her problems through like this like really energetic unabashed support and kindness and they kind of just go shopping and um you kind of just get like internal dialogues and stuff like that. Um, they also kind of hint, I don't know if you guys got this vibe, but that Eco has some feelings towards Izume. A hundred percent. I think that's what yeah. the whole yeah, thing is. I don't is. think that was hinted at. It it, it's hard for me to immediately say like, oh, they're going to scissor. It's more just like, <laughs> okay. Well, no, no. But it felt more like she, she doesn't have any like role models or people she looks up to or, ha or she does, but I mean, she doesn't have like a, yeah, her grandpa, which we'll find out later, but she doesn't have any like close relationships. And so oftentimes when you don't have those like close relationships, you can kind of it can be easily misinterpreted. Like that love for another person can be misinterpreted. Well, didn't they as, like, a say that she did have her grandpa and that's part of the problem is the one person she was close with, she now lost. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's just like, like I'm saying, if you don't have friends and stuff like that, having that one first friend, you can get into this like weird gray area. Um, so I'm not sure yet if if she she wants to you know to bang, but um, you kind of get this backstory start to build up that basically her grandfather has passed away um, and that he was a composer um, and that she wanted to be one like him as well. And when he passed, she kind of like lost her way. Her mom isn't super supportive and kind of like this teenage versus mother situation. She tries to get back into music and composing, and then she pulls herself out because she doesn't know if she's doing it to keep the memory of her grandfather alive or if she's doing it because that's what she genuinely wants to do. So she's constantly like this mental struggle. And, you know, she like looks forward constantly to having a zoomie around. Um, but I really liked it in general um, for like just how minimalistic everything was and like the fact that they just do dialogues. It was like, almost like a diary or like journal that's been animated it was really kind of like nice um it was still gloomy and sad but you know like it was you know introspective she could like you're, you're having a conversation in her head um and basically you come to an ending where she wants to display this um piece of music that she's been working on and she had been watching a video earlier that i had it had like a great little title it was like um building concepts and other bullshit or something like that which i thought was funny but for music and so basically the guy was saying oh the best way for somebody to see inside of you like you're who you are is to give them like these piece of work and see what they think of you kind of thing so she uh we kind of end on a cliffhanger where she's about to give izumi her mixtape essentially and she's starting to like freak out they do a countdown and then it's basically okay the leap of faith moment so it was it was good i don't I wouldn't say this is in the realm of like a winner for this contest, but I definitely think it was one of those like dark horse, like pretty good um, little stories. So I don't know what you guys thought of it. Um, I thought the art was really unique, really fantastic. Yeah. I really liked the art style too. to it. Mm -hmm. um, like uniqueness was incredible. It was a little deep 
um, yeah. constantly talking about like her inner self and things like that. But I mean, not for me, but it, I could would still say it was good. Yeah. You know, it's there's nothing wrong with it. I could you could see where it was going a mile away, like fucking where they had a yeah. relationship, whatever. Um, I mean, shit, that's the, pretty much it. And then it's like you don't. It, I feel like it's hard to do a music manga. It yeah. It did remind me a little bit. We have this uh, manga at work, and it's called "My First Experience with Lesbian Love?" Question oh. mark. Um, what? And it, yeah, an it's, it's, name it's for a this, girl. Really. It's a girl manga about like it's just some Japanese chick trying you know basically have a sex with another girl but it reminded me very much of this one where it's kind of the same sort of setup where she's kind of exploring her feelings she's not sure about it she can't really talk to her mom um which by the way i feel like her mom is totally in the right okay she just wants to know where she is yeah the fucking girl is not telling her where she is it's it's all about the teenage thing though it's definitely like all growing pains and stuff just shoot a text she's texting that other girl the whole time I think we're all coming from like a logistical standpoint and she's in this like I, I wonder if it's something that happened between her and her mom that hasn't been established where there's like this I break was in trust. Say, it looks like something happened because the minute yeah. she walks in the door she has another one of those attacks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. And it's it, it's illustrated really well. Yeah, no, it, yeah. they don't tell you oh it's anxiety or something. She's just having like a fucking triggering situation and it's I I, I get it. I but I think it's more like yeah, she had some loss of uh like faith in her mom or something like that she's a teenager for christ's sake like i think we've all been at that point where it's like she says whatever a lot most of the time it's kind of like okay when you say whatever you don't have a good argument you're just being an asshole she was probably just being a teenager at that point but i i don't know you said it was a music manga i feel like it's the same as saying like joker was uh like the recent joker with joaquin phoenix was a joker movie rather than just like a mental health film that used joker as a medium i think music is just the medium it, this is like a mental health thing where you're gonna see like i her mean it's hard to say at this point isn't it though yeah. because it it's looks still, like it's gonna it's, go very yeah. deep into music how when dare it, you count chapter. Chapter. yeah <laughs> yeah no but i agree July and april made the whole music thing work and that was a great show and i feel like this one can definitely be a sort of you know emotional roller coaster mm-hmm. like shows like that i'm not sure if it's a great fit for shonen jump yeah. Um, but I really liked it overall. Um, it might have just been me, but in the beginning, I was like, "Oh, is there like something supernatural going on when she's having these episodes?" Oh uh, yeah. Sometimes it shows her hand, and it's like, I don't know. I'm. It's probably just you know showing that she's going like the through physical this. aspect of but it. But it looks like yeah, it almost looks like her hands going translucent, maybe a little bit. Mm-hmm. So I was like, "Ooh, that's a cool twist." But yeah. I think it's just like a visual representation of oh she's she's having a, a moment a moment yeah anxiety or, or panic attack or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but I liked it overall. Yeah, and I, I fully agree with you guys. I, I don't think this is something that would win this contest, but I, I think it was like a good submission regardless. Mm-hmm. So. I thought it was good. I liked it. I so could see it as too. its own yeah, manga. Yeah, as its own standalone yeah. thing. Yeah. I think it's great. But like, I don't uh, see for, it being serialized jump. in Shonen yeah. Jump. I think it was yeah. good. But I just yeah. don't. It's so different, and it's very, very serious, and like, yeah, very emotionally debt, like in depth. I so, did you know. like the change of pace, though, from what we usually read to this. Yeah, it's nice yeah. to have that like difference, because every then it's just everything's the same. But mm-hmm. yeah, that was good. Okay, um, unless anybody else has anything else to say, we'll move on to Jose's, which is Lobster Vampire and Hummus Cat by oh Mark Dow. Oh boy, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so I picked it because I saw the cover and I was like, oh, that looks cool. It looks like a cat, like a weird looking cat. Yeah, you seem to really like the ones with the weird art style, Jose. If they Not if their art style is just style. a little bit different, Jose's like, yeah, that's going to be the one I'm going to pick. It's like, I, I, so I, lo- I love Bleach. I love Kubo's style of art a lot. Um, so it's kind of like cool seeing other styles of art lately. It's just a little bit uh, refreshing. Anyways, we jump straight in uh, to a dude walking with his hummus cat, and the dude's a vampire, by the way. <laughs> totally like, I normal. Still, I still don't get how the Which, cat's a hummus. Which, by the way, the fact that he's a vampire does not come up ever. Or a lobster. And he's walking in broad daylight. He, he uses his claws like a Okay, the, I did yeah. see the, the nails, but yeah. they don't ever actually address him as a vampire or a lobster yeah. vampire or anything. He, he doesn't even have I, a pincer claw or anything. Yeah. That we know of. I, I do. It only comes up later. 
I believe after like the main boss comes out. Yeah. But his name is Bisk. Bisk. And he's the lobster vampire, Lobster Bisk. I, I was it. dying. It was... It, it's pretty funny. Like I love the the cat and the little like witty remarks he has to say most of the time throughout this thing. But yeah, uh, Hummus it's, Cat it's... carried it for me. He's, yeah. he's <laughs> I he's straight... fully disagree with you uh, all. <laughs> you hate the cat? I There was a different character that carried it harder for me than anything I else. I know who you're talking about. Yeah. We'll get to him. So Bisk, uh, Bisk and Hummus Cat are going to their muffin shop, which they, I guess they go to all the time. But surprise, it's a sorbet. Sorbet. B-A-E <laughs> shop. Um, so stupid. <laughs> So, I mean, they, they still go in and, you know, because they're upset that their muffin shop is gone. Uh, and behind there, they meet this bro-looking dude. You know, let, let, let me set the scene for you. Like, they walk in and they see a shaved head with a combed-over hair, very Skrillex-like. Turns around and has gauged ears. Total bro, right? So hot. Yeah, yeah, bro. Bro, yeah, total yeah. bro. He, yeah, he's totally talking about uh, how, like, vegan their... Their, uh sorbets are and and he's like here try this free sample to which uh bisk tries it and he's like this is like dry erase marker spits it out <laughs> and everything and bro's like nah it's vegan and the cat's like oh it's from outer space i like that part a lot i made me laugh yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah but then bisk notices like a picture on the wall and it's this guy named Re- uh, reginald who happens to be uh i'm just his name is broski <laughs> Yeah, uh, I fucking yeah. love Broski. He's like, Look, take uh, take me to him. I need to talk to him. He's like, no. And then it gets super serious. Then the cat's like, oh, I got some banana milk here, yo. And then they <laughs> they spill the milk onto the sorbet. And he's like, no, it, it's just vegan. And let me read this part. It's not just vegan. Everything here is also organic, non-GMO, fair trade, ethically raised, probiotic enhanced, charcoal activated, and blessed with a with a food affirming sense. Sanskrit? Sanskrit chant. Fucking and then, beautiful. <laughs> then he pours it on there and uh, Broski just loses it. Punches a bisque straight in the face. It punches him so hard he flies out the building and, you know, is pretty tumbled. Broski comes out of the fucking dust and he's just like, ah, time to fight. And he's like, totes. <laughs> so stupid. I, I, the dialogue from that guy and the cat, they made it for me. It's yeah. just um, so on point. It's it's, it's so funny. Good. It's yeah. just like so they like, they just keep talking a little bit and then they straight up go straight to fighting where um Bisk tells him, Oh, your manager's right behind me and then Broski turn catches it while he's turned around, he's like, Not today, bitch. But still gets kicked in the face, uh doesn't really face him and then out of nowhere uses like a key attack, only to realize that it's uh that it was uh stopped by his shield. And uh, Broski punches through that shield anyways, gets caught, some more combat, which is pretty cool. I like the combat. It was good. Uh, Broski punches Bisk in the stomach pretty hard, and then he stomps him into the ground, creating a crater, jumps up to the sky, and goes into his butterfly mode, which is his this ultimate was the attack. the best part. And he calls <laughs> it butterfly effect. With an A. With an A. Yep. And then they have a fucking conversation. Yep. No, yeah, I think it's effect. No, it's effect. <laughs> I love that part. I yeah. Dying. To that, he's like, okay, time to use it. He's like, yeah. He's like, what does the cat say? He goes YOLO at one point. <laughs> so dumb. Yes, yeah. And I don't have much purr left in my DM. Purr in my DM. <laughs> that was a good one, too. But you know what? YOLO. And they use their uh, hummus cannon to counter his uh, butterfly effect with an A. To which someone screams out, uh, out of frame, stop. And they're both like, what? He's like, you. Reginald. Um, Broski then apologizes, or he's trying to explain his side of the story. Basically, he's uh, uh, Reggie tells um, Broski that he couldn't really take him on, so he is kind of disgraced and decides to exile him. Reginald throws ice cream, I want to say, sorbet? like sorbets sorbet. at him. <laughs> uh, sorbets at him. He takes it, and it's much like a sensu bean, where it, uh, yeah. He, yeah. it restores his stamina and everything, and he's like, alright, time to fight. And Reginald just moves at lightning speed and just, you know, beats the crap out of him. Leaves him on the floor and then says, congratulations. By not being decimated by Broski, you've earned your first punch in the Sor- Sorbet Fighter Program. So He's stupid. like, get five more and you'll face me, kind of thing. Yeah. And get free Sorbet on the house. 
Yeah. Yep, and a free sorbet on the house. And then it ends with him being like, hey, you still want a muffin? We can get extras and, you know, just save them for tomorrow. We'll fight those other assholes later on. I... That's, that's pretty much it. Shit was fire. Yeah, so it's, Bisk it's used to work good. under Reginald is yeah, what yeah. I got from yeah. that. So Yeah, Yeah, because he at, at one point I think he said that he was also let go and it was the best thing that happened to him. Yeah. So Reginald was asking him. To well, yeah, Reggie said that he let him go, but then Bisk was like, nah, I left. You know, kind of like yeah. that oh, okay, breakup okay. situation. Um, <laughs> but this very much reminded me of like a Scott Pilgrim. That's yep. like, yeah, yeah. Yep. After yeah. reading that first thing that came to my mind, it's like, oh, it's like very much like Scott Pilgrim, where he's now got to fight the four other boyfriends four other people. to go yeah. to fucking yeah. the last guy. But the comedy was so on point. Like, I was I, cracking I, up yeah. from it. It was very today. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I do like that. Yeah. Like, if you were to put this in a museum for later, like, <laughs> give it 20 years, people would be like, what the fuck is wrong with these what people? What was wrong yeah. with the 2020s? Besides the Rona, it's like everybody keeps saying hashtag YOLO. Mm-hmm. Like what? What is what is going on? And I I thought like the art style wasn't going to be good based off the the cover photo. I thought it was going to be a little sloppier. But like I don't know if it's just as the combat progressed, but it got more sharp. It was really good looking. As mm-hmm. weird as it was, I really liked it. Yeah, the, yeah. the art was good. Comedy I like this good. one too. Um, shit, it's like they do like fucking Dragon Ball Z shit out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's the very... combat was easy to follow mm-hmm. yes very fluid and i don't know i feel like it has you know potential to be a good manga exactly yeah in my notes it, it could be up there with like bobo Bo. it's like a gag fighting manga and i feel like they leave the potential for broski to come back you know yeah Cause cause redemption broski round for broski friends yeah because broski is like it gives the thanks to our main character if we yeah. just leave in, i so. fucking adore that character what if yeah. Broski comes back but has a beard and then he has like that new like eyebrow slit in his hair? Or oh, in I'd his love eye. it. He'd be the wow. Vegeta of the series. Dude, I'd, he could. I'd have fucking adore it. Okay. Well, uh, does anybody have any last words to say on Lobster Vampire and Hummus Cat? You continue funny. to amaze me. Uh, Jose, <laughs> I don't know how you keep picking, picking the weirdest fucking ones and I still enjoy them. So, GG. Okay. Oh, so, thank, uh, thank moving everybody. on. Uh, last one we're doing is Owl by lord gaius sure uh yep. and that's yours jj go ahead okay um so uh we open up with uh cowl one of our main characters uh he looks a lot like moon knight mm-hmm. just want to get that yeah, out there, he right, does. Right in the beginning and he's talking with this no-name character am i am i right i didn't yeah. find, I, I think you're right anyone. i don't think he gets him a name yeah. uh, okay. we'll just call him mr exposition uh, you can Very get- much so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Those text bubbles were giant, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, Mr. Exposition is telling Cowl uh, about an uprising that's going to happen or is happening. Uh, and he wants Cowl and Owl to go stop them, uh, either by, you know, stopping the fighting or being there to prevent the fighting from happening. Just by being like a monolith. Just- yeah chilling out there yeah because apparently this cow guy is a big deal Mm -hmm. um and so i guess they're all working for lord nevicar is is what i assume it's called uh, he's called yeah i think that's right yeah they later refer to as the nevicar forces so yeah basically telling him hey go go stop this thing uh so uh cowl shouts for owl and then we do like a little kind of rewind uh 30 minutes back uh, and we see Owl kind of sitting there staring uh, down at a pond for 30 minutes, because then we fast forward 30 minutes uh, when the fish finally jumps out of the pond and she catches it. Uh, but then she hears the call and she's like, oh, fine, next time. And she throws the fish back into the water Super cute. Uh, and then zooms away. Mr. Exposition is explaining that the leader of this uprising is a guy do, uh, a guy called Anders. And apparently he's chosen, uh, which means he's basically blessed by a god. So then he goes into kind of speculating on what Anders's power might be based on the fact that he has, uh, you know, the blessing from a god of the hearth. Which is Um, really weird. uh, So after a whole lot of talking, he's like, any questions? Uh, And Cal's like, nope. And he puts his hand up and then Owl swoops by and grabs him. 
straight up yeets him. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then we get a little kind of introductory text box to show that Owl is Owl, I guess, uh, and that we don't know who is God she has been chosen by. And then we get one last little bit from Mr. Exposition kind of uh, saying he's never seen Cowl without the Cowl, uh, and he doesn't know if he has an arm, and he doesn't think that Owl's god is really an Owl god based on kind of the range of her powers. Uh, and then we jump to Cowl and Owl flying to the battle. It's just like one little page, but it's a little bit of back and forth. I really like this bit. Yeah. Um, kind of shows their, their partnership. I'm getting kind of like a father-daughter vibe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a really uh, cute page. Uh, and then we get straight into the battle uh, where, you know, there's cannons going off. A dude gets sniped in the eye with an arrow. Yeah, yeah that, that, really that cool. was crazy. Uh, and then we get a really cool, like, three-panel zoom in as they're kind of, like, falling JJ, from the I had sky. it in my notes. I think that's one of the most well-done parts. Yeah. I really yeah. like that. That was fantastic. I got to that part, and I was like, what? And then I, once I realized what was happening, I was like, that is so cool. Yeah, it's uh, great. Yeah. Uh, wow. And then Cowell just, like, straight up smashes this dude. And the, the enemy soldiers, the uprising soldiers, are like, oh, God, it's Cowell, the, the white hand of Nevakar. So, you know, obviously he's a big deal. And then we see Owl kind of, like, superhero landing up on a tower. Uh, she looks over the battlefield and then zooms back. Uh, and does a really cool bin kick to kind of get some dudes off of Cowl's flank. Uh, and then it's a really cool panel where Owl and Cowl kind of like look at each other and smile. And then we see someone grab Owl's scarf and just kind of like toss her, I guess. And she goes flying and smacks into the ground. She's coughing up blood, but she doesn't seem too phased by it until she looks up and she sees that this dude... Anders has her scarf and he says careful where you're flying you know, uh, girl you might bump into something dangerous and he's got this like badass pose and you can see that he's destroyed her scarf big rip yeah big douche. and then we go into a little bit of flashback where it shows I'm assuming the first meeting of Cowl and Owl I'm kind of getting like she's an orphan type vibe Yeah. and he yeah. just kind of picked her up uh, so he slices off a piece of his cowl and gives it to her, and that's her scarf. You know, we learn here that the scarf is from cowl, and so obviously it's important to her. Uh, and then we go back to it burning up, and Owl starts to cry. Uh, and then Cowl looks over, and he's all, oh, crap. I, I guess it's to like lead us to believe that she might be in trouble, mm -hmm. but we quickly find out that that's not the case. I, I yeah. feel like I didn't ever fall into that. When I saw him like going, oh, crap, I immediately was like, oh, she's going to do something fucking gonna go, like, OP demon as mode. hell. I, I'm in the realm of JJ. I thought I didn't, I didn't know what she was going to do. but Like, it definitely could have gone either way. Yeah, I can see um, how you would have gotten that. But it's like the moment I saw him freaking out, I was like, oh, she's about to be broken as shit. <laughs> so Anders is walking towards her all cocky-like. Uh, and then suddenly he's just kind of in this plane of water uh and he starts freaking out and then he gets a shiver kind of like he senses something behind him and he turns around uh and we see owl in this like shadow demon form yeah mob psycho um, form yeah yeah and then she just kind of like stares at him for a second and then drops under the water and he's like the fuck the water's only a couple centimeters deep how can that be and then we see him just kind of drop below the surface as well and then we get this cool two-page splash of him just kind of, like, falling deeper under the water. And then he's freaking out, trying to figure out, oh, God, where's where's up? I can't see anything. I can't hold my breath for forever. Uh, and then we see this big, multi-eyed, formless god, and we learn that is chosen of Owl. Uh, Can you pronounce the name of it real quick? Uh, yeah. Uh, it says right here in parentheses, uh, formless elder god. <laughs> that is correct. Yeah. 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 Nice. Uh, but yeah, we get this really cool, like, glitchy text thing to show that this this elder god is, uh, you know, an elder god, and it it doesn't conform to our puny mortal ways of thinking or whatever. Yep. Uh, and then she just kind of fucking drowns him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and that's Straight great. Up. 
So we skip to after the battle. Uh, there are soldiers like cleaning up, uh, and they find Anders. He's got this like dead look in his eye, and they're like, "I don't know what happened to him. How could he have drowned out here on the battlefield?" And they're like, "I don't know, but whatever it was, it must have been utterly terrifying." And then we skip to Cowell running through a forest, I guess, being shot at by a bunch yeah, of people. Yeah, so were you confused by this part as well? Because I was yeah. mega confused how we yeah. came to this situation. I wonder yeah, if I have, being I have a theory. Okay. Um, but I'll finish this out real quick. Yeah. Uh, so he's he's running through a forest. It looks like there's a couple trees and a lake, maybe. He gets shot a couple times, but he seems to be fine because he's a main character. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, and then we see Owl wake up, and she sees that she's with Cowl, and she's happy and safe. And then we get to see Cowl without the Cowl. And he has an arm. He has an arm. He does have both arms. <laughs> and he's just sitting there kind of up against the tree looking all badass. And that is Owl. So my theory for the end there is that the uprising soldiers saw Owl nuke Anders. And they were like, we got to kill her. She just killed our leader. And so they chased them off the battlefield. Mm, but then at that point, the sense. enemy leader is dead. So the uprisers are like, well, we don't have a leader. I guess we're done here. And they, they surrender. Because I was they confused on two fronts people. because yeah. they tell you that the defenders win. And so that was the side that was on. But then Cal is off somewhere else. Yeah. So He's why like couldn't he have away. just stayed? But then also like the team with Anders is just hanging out there. It's like, oh, yeah. what happened to him? That's weird. It's like, oh, okay. Uh, I don't, I don't think those were the. So the guys who found Anders, I believe those are soldiers for Lord Nevakar. I don't think that oh. they're people from the uprising. That would make more sense. They did look different because the the dude that got dunked on in your favorite three panel part uh, <laughs> was a conquistador looking dude. And yeah, these guys have like full on armor, uh, yeah. sort of samurai ish, I guess. Um, and I wouldn't be able to say what the cutscene was, but this uh, the part, the whole underwater part, reminded that World of Warcraft cutscene, uh, or the trailer where the the night elf chick meets Nazoth oh, under the water. Mm. I mean, it, it was dope. There's there's plenty of things where people are sinking and the, the water's above them, <laughs> and it's just kind of silence under the water. So Ichigo. Um, I wrote down that I really like the setup for this. I wish yeah. the exposition in the front wasn't so front loaded. It so, was crazy. Ugh. Yeah, it was. So um, that first into. page with the fuck ton of text, I was confused where to even start because yep. like there's art on the right side, which you normally you, know, you go right to left, mm-hmm. but then like the text starts on the top left, so I didn't know where to fucking go. It was like okay, yes. Oh, okay, yeah. So I, I just kind of hopped in, and it made sense, and I was like, okay, I guess that's how it's supposed to be read. So there you go. <laughs> yeah. I, so this is, I'm going to sound like Sam here. The action fucked with me. I couldn't understand. It was, yeah. I just, the cow part's fine. But when Al kind of hopped in, I got, she kind of slingshot herself. And then after that, I was like, okay, that's a little confusing. I I went back and reread it. And that's why I was so happy when JJ said what he said. It was like, okay, cool. I did get the exact same thing that you, it was basically, she harpooned herself and there kicked two dudes that were about to ambush cow. Yep. And then get stunked on by Anderson. It was like, what the fuck just happened? Yeah, the the part where Anders grabs her cowl or her scarf mm-hmm. rather, that part confused me. I was good up until then because I thought, oh, they looked at each other, they smiled, they're gonna do like a fastball special. Yeah. Uh, and then she's just on the floor bleeding. The next page, I was like, hold up, what happened? <laughs> yeah. uh, well- but when you know what it was and you go back and look at it, it actually doesn't look too, too bad. Like the grabbing of the, the scarf looked cool to me once I knew what the fuck was actually happening. Well, yeah, but... I knew. So I knew someone was grabbing the scarf, but I, I figured because of the, the, the two panels before it where they you know looked at each other and smiled, they were like, all right, let's fucking do this. Yeah. And he was going to slingshot her. Oh, uh, yeah. but that, that was not the case. And then I also didn't really get that. Anders had firepower until after the flashback because it shows yeah. that he, he destroys the scarf but it's not until after the flashback where you see a bit of the scarf on the floor with like smoke coming off of it in the mm, like charred yeah um which makes sense because mr exposition had said that he might have firepowers 
But like exposition's description of him, like, oh, you know, he's probably bringing people together because of the hearth. That's what it does. And warmness. He's warming them up to the cause or something. It was like, at no point did anyone want to, like, we don't need that. He was just taking <laughs> guesses, dog. He was just pointing yeah, it out. It was I'm just sure so bad, said. though. That part was bad. But I think they were memeing. Like, he wasn't intended to be a super great character. I no, don't he know. He did mention have him potentially also having a heating ability. Yeah. Mm. But it was it, it was just weird. And I, I feel like it was... I, Cal kind of says, oh, this guy talks my ear off. So it was like, okay, maybe he's established as an over-communicator. He seemed to know a lot, though, that guy. Yeah, he did. Like, the, yeah. he, it was a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. And then when he was even talking, I was like, oh, I don't think Al is really chosen by an Al god. I was like, this guy knows a fuck ton, apparently. Yeah. Yeah, I'm he's assuming he's like a right hand to the Lord. Because mm. mm. um, he definitely doesn't seem just like a throwaway messenger character. Yeah. And then I like, uh, I guess it's Paige eight where they're having their little chit chat in the sky i like how mm -hmm. it showed uh like Our a little relationship. owl in the little chat bubbles yeah uh since it wasn't actually showing her in the panel uh so we got a little bit of attitude from her but yeah i, I liked it overall uh what i did write in my notes about the art style is i feel like we've seen a lot of submissions with a very similar style it's kind of just like almost like basic manga style um, and it just doesn't have that like personal flair to it, you know. Got you. I would say just that's fair. Like some of the some yeah. of the face shapes, um, and then maybe even some of the body poses. So I would say that's totally accurate. Where it's a you're very you know it is your manga style, but it's just your regular manga style, and that doesn't mean it's bad. I still, for me, I put like the art was still good, but oh, it's, it's definitely it's good. very it is your basic style. You know, it's not. Yeah, like one of those books you get from Barnes and Noble, you know, yeah, yes. like how to draw anime. Yeah, it's like okay. that done really well, just without the personal flair that kind of really makes it yours. Yeah. yeah, like like when the dude who draws Fairy Tale draws a character, even if it's like Spider Man, you're like, yeah, that's the dude who drew Fairy Tale. Yeah. Hero Mashima. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. all of his shit looks identical. So yeah, it does. <laughs> uh, was it Rave Master? Well, yeah. Now he's doing Eden Zero, or something like that, and it's. Yep. Looks like it has fucking fairy tale characters in it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was Al by Lord Gaius. So let's try and figure out which one we like the best, which one we want to choose as our winner. So just a quick rundown. We did Al by Lord Gaius, as I said. Lobster Vampire and Hummus Cat by Mark Dow. Soundless Patchwork Trimble by Giant Turtle. And then Vampire by Haku. So those were our four this week. Is there one that stands out to you guys as the one that you like the most? I, I would say all of them were actually really good this week. Mine is between Vampire and Owl. I'm probably going to lean on Vampire because it was a more polished product in okay. the end game. Uh, Jose, what are your thoughts? I'm torn. Like, I really like Vampire. Okay. I liked Owl, and I did like Lobster. Okay. It was so good. So you and Josh both like Vampire and Owl. You guys have that in common. Jose, yeah, you sure. also like Lobster Vampire. JJ, what are your thoughts? But um, I, I will legit say, though, I did prefer the lob Lobster one. Okay. Surprisingly, Lobster Vampire is up there for me. Mm -hmm. And I would say it's in contention with Owl for the top spot in my book. Okay. Um, so I have one that I like way more than the rest of them by far. Soundless Patchwork Tremble. I agree. Um, <laughs> lobster Vampire and Hummus Cat, best one. So I'm not, I think most unique, obviously, aside I, from, I mm -hmm. think, Tremble, the Tremble one is yeah. incredibly unique, but I just don't, mm -hmm. I wouldn't put it in Shonen Jump. Yeah. Um, but I really like that one. That was I would say that would take the title for the funniest one we've done so far. I agree with it, it was the yeah. funniest one. Um yeah. the yeah. art right style was Otaku. Yeah, the, the art style was actually different and it was mm -hmm. nice. So that it was kind of a little similar to that Boba Bo kind of feel. Um but the bands but it wasn't was good. Boba, 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 the fight you know? scenes were right. good. Um I, I liked it all. It's shit. It's like that, yeah. that that was good. I would totally yeah. be okay with that being the winner, to be quite honest. Because I, 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 again, like all of them were good this this week. I yeah. really oh, liked yeah. all of them. So, yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, if I wasn't pick that one, I'd probably pick Vampire. I really like Vampire. Yeah. Uh, the exposition was too heavy in Al for me at the beginning. I was like, man, that is a snooze. That is a hard pass. <laughs> it, a hard I feel pass. if they had like the art and the story building that they had in Vampire, but to give into Owl, 
that would have been like a really killer one I, where you had that twist with yeah, the old Elder God. Yeah, I agree that. But I, I like the basic setup of Al, where it's like there's these yeah. people who are chosen by God, so they get powers based on kind of like mm-hmm. what their gods do, and you know yeah. they're uber powerful. It's like I like that. That's cool. But like, yeah. just give me that piece of information and just throw me in. It's like let's yeah. fucking see it. Let's you go. You didn't need the whole. I didn't need the whole military text. history background of this uprising going on. Yeah. That was too much. It was like, if I could have just, and I don't think it was very long to begin with. It wasn't one of the longer ones we've read, but it's no. like, yeah, it's like 28 no, it's pages. One of the shorter ones. Those yeah. first three, man, they're just front load the fuck out of you. So, yeah. but it, it lobster vampire. Just, there's no basis. Oh, we have no God. idea what the yeah. fuck is going on. We just know that he's got a punch card. <laughs> I will say good. that vampire also had a lot of text. Oh yeah. Especially yeah, in the, I guess it would be, after the dude explodes the guy up yeah. until the point where mana shows up, yeah. Dion talks to himself a lot for <laughs> yeah, like three whole pages. He does. Yeah. I totally agree I they to could that cut that part shit and I was right like, out. I just, uh, that it was didn't tough serve to a purpose aside from showing that he's just studying. Like that's yeah. really it. That's all yeah. he's talking about. Yeah. And I, I think, I think that's one of my main issues with vampire is I feel like it was too much stuff. Mm-hmm. Like they could have, they could have stripped it down a whole lot and it could have been, a lot more succinct uh, and still have been just as good. I and agree. maybe had room for that combat scene at the end. I feel like a lot Definitely, of submissions yeah. could do um, really well with having somebody else read their thing first and then basically like cutting, cutting the fat off of it. Yeah. See, but what's weird to me is, and we've noticed it with a few of the previous submissions, these are groups. Like, it's not just one person well, submitting. I mean, most these. of them are one person. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, but it, there, it really depends. There are there. some that are groups, but I would there imagine are some a lot of these that are just. Do it one or two people if not yeah. just one person and yeah, I, I, I mean, would sam isn't your shirt from a studio Cactus that was a... coyote boys oh, that, was coyote. Okay. There. that yeah. was beautiful jose it is a it is a good shirt Hashtag yeah, not we, sponsored. we dream in yeah not sponsored, <laughs> not sponsored. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay so i i would say are we in agreement lobster cat for the winner yeah. for this week lobster. Or lobster yeah. vampire. Lobster i just cat. cut out lobster the two cat. words yeah. Lobster Vampire and Hummus Cat oh, by yeah. Mark Dow. Congratulations. You are the winner this week. Ooh. Ooh. Big congrats all around. Very funny. GG Great. for everyone. I too. just want it to be in Shonen Jump so bad so it's officially published in something and someone could look back on it like 10 years from now. What the fuck is that? Is that? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like, I agree. I mean, we don't know the origins of Hummus Cat. Oh, it'd yeah. be so funny, man. It's like, oh, I would love it. Well, uh, that's this week's Jump Tezuka Mangaku special. We will not have one next week because that'll be regular Mangaku where we're reading li- Witch's Library or some shit. Witch's, what are we reading? That's this week's Jump Tezuka special. Next week, we'll be back with the regular Mangaku. So there'll be a break on the Jump Tezuka stuff. And then we will be back after that. We're coming close to the end. This ends September yeah, 1st. September 1st. Yeah. So I am worried that when this ends, they somehow close it. But I, I think we'll be able to still read them if they take it down for some reason then shit shit out of luck on that so we'll be back be sure to leave a like and subscribe on the video and uh with that we will see you guys next week or two weeks from now if you only watch these videos until then uh have a good one everybody